Okay, welcome back. We have today the second part of the interface construction video using Vesta. Last time we made an interface with, I believe, a gold uh, 111 surface and a nitric oxide molecule. Um, today, what we are going to do is take two separate crystals and join them together. And I'm just going to use an arbitrary example. This isn't uh, uh, necessarily, necessarily a relevant example, like I haven't found any literature that discusses the compound we're going to make today, or I should say the heterostructure we're going to make today. But procedurally speaking, what we're going to do today can be done for any two agreeable crystal structures. And I think you'll see what I mean in a second. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we're going to do is I have two crystal structures uh, here. These are just normal unit cells. Uh, one of them is the ruthenium unit cell from a few videos back. Uh, and I have an indium unit cell here as well. And so if you look at this ruthenium unit cell, here I, it's a cubic unit cell. So what I'm going to do is, is take its, uh, its unit cell and I'm going to open up an Excel spreadsheet. And here I have ruthenium and indium. Let's center this data. A, B, C. And so ruthenium was a cubic. So I can go ahead and insert this uh, lattice length for each one of these. And indium actually is not. So let's do the first one. Okay. And the third one is here. And so Oops. Now what I'm going to do is, if I want to combine these two structures, okay, first and foremost, let's see what they look like. So we have ruthenium. So you can see it is uh, just a normal sort of cubic structure. And then we have indium, which is also a, I, th I think this is a body centered cubic, but I don't necessarily know if it is cubic because I think this uh, C direction is longer than A and B. So uh, anyways, what we're going to do is combine these two into a single interface. And what we have to do is we have to basically expand the unit cells such that their lattice constants uh, match up in the two directions we're going to interface. And of course, the other direction will just be vacuum. And so let's define this new uh, ruthenium indium unit cell. And so actually what, what I found is that if you, in this A direction, uh, these are actually basically the same number when you multiply the ruthenium by six lattice constants and the indium by five lattice constants. So let's multiply this by six and we're going to multiply this by five. And you can see uh, the, the lattice mismatches in the hundredth place. And so what I'm saying to you is that you can combine any two crystals if their units, uh, unit cell will match up in this fashion for any uh, integer multiple of their lattice constants. So for, for example, like I said earlier, for ruthenium, we would need six lattice constants and for indium, uh, we, need, we need five. And, you know, for example, you might have cadmium selenide and molybdenum sulfide, they would have a different sort of uh, uh, integer multiple to bring those crystals together. And so these are going to be the new a and B directions in our heterostructure supercell. And this will actually be uh, just our vacuum. So I'll put a uh, vacuum here. We'll just, just a vacuum. Okay, so now here's the hard part. We have to do this in Vesta. So here's how we do it. Okay, I'm going to exit out of this indium and we have our ruthenium unit cell. Okay, first things first, I'm going to change the color on the ruthenium. Okay. So now what you do is you go to edit, edit data, unit cell, phase. Now we go to phase and we are going to import our indium unit cell. Okay. Now let's press apply. Okay. Now you can see that I have the ruthenium unit cell inside the indium unit cell. They're basically superimposed on each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this indium unit cell. 
Okay, and I'm going to go to the global coordinate system. First things first, I like the C direction to be facing upwards. So I just click this A and it puts the C direction facing upwards. Now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to shift the uh, indium unit cell about five, about six angstroms in the, C, in the C dimension. And that's because that's the dimension we're not going to expand here. So let's shift, uh, shift the indium six angstroms. Okay. So now it appears above our ruthenium. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to select our ruthenium unit cell. We're going to go to unit cell, transform. Now the ruthenium was uh, shifted six lattice constants in the A dimension and six lattice constants in the B dimension. So we're going to transform our unit cell six by six and not touch the Z direction. Select OK. Yes. OK. And apply. Now, here's what you have. The ruthenium has been shifted uh, six by six in the A and B dimension, but it has not been scaled in the C dimension. Now, what we're going to do is go back to phase and select our indium, go to unit cell, transform, and we only needed to shift this five by five. Select OK. Yes. OK. Apply. Now we can exit out of here. Shift this over. And you see here, we now have our, our new sort of interface that we can work with. And you can see this, this will be the interface and the lattice constants are pretty agreeable here. So your challenge will be to figure out which two crystals are going to, uh, if the two crystals you want to combine have this sort of, uh, have this sort of agreement when you, you know, shift the lattice constants on each crystal. And so now what we have to do, if you can imagine this C dimension up and down, this is going to be where our vacuum is. We need to, to make this structure into one new unit cell. And uh, what's gonna happen is if you can just imagine that these current unit cells are not here and we just have one unit cell, one giant unit cell, and the C dimension is the vacuum. So in that case, if we wanted to then take this structure and put it into, let's say, Quantum Espresso or any other electronic structure software package, uh, we would need the coordinates in the A and B dimensions, which I now have here on the plane of the page. We would need these to be uh, periodic, which means that the coordinates we enter into Quantum Espresso need to be aperiodic. And so how we're going to do that is, as you see here, what we're going to do is, so if we want it to be periodic in terms of how Quantum Espresso would view it, we want the B dimension to be cut like this because we would have repeating atoms if we were to save it as an XYZ file. And you see, if we save it as an XYZ file now in the A dimension, we have repeating atoms. Uh, like for example, this layer is repeating with this side over here. And in Quantum Espresso or any other electronic structure software package, this would be not allowed. So we're going to delete this here. And however, in the C dimension where we have the vacuum, uh, like for example, in this ruthenium crystal or in this indium uh, slab or crystal, whatever you wish to call it, there is a repetition across this lattice constant. That's fine because this entire dimension here will be vacuum. And so this entire layer will not be repeating and there'll only be one of these per unit cell. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually gonna save this not as a VASP, but as an XYZ. So file export data. Okay, it's gonna be XYZ file. We're gonna call it indium ruthenium underscore XYZ and then it's going to save dot XYZ. So save, do not save hidden atoms. Okay, so here we are. Now we have the XYZ coordinates for our indium ruthenium structure. There's 291 atoms. So what I'm going to do is make a new file, Shift F4, um, oh, here we go, indium ruthenium VASP, and save this quickly. Then I'm going to copy what was the indium file, just so I have a template for VASP. 
and then I'm going to go into indium ruthenium VASP, paste this, and then I'll just write ruthenium up here, ruthenium here, delete these coordinates. Okay, now here's, here's the secret. We need to make the unit cell parameters for our new crystal. And we know that in the C dimension, we're going to have vacuum. So let's just put 50 here. Uh, these extra zeros don't matter, but I just like to uh, have it line up. Uh, so if we go back to our Excel spreadsheet, we had the lattice constant. We're going to go with a larger one here. So 22.98. That's what we'll go with. So 22.98 and fill in the zeros. Okay, now what we have to do is copy the coordinates from our XYZ file. So there's 291 atoms. Let's count our ruthenium. So you can see ruthenium starts at line three. And it ends at line 218. So 218 minus three plus one, there's 216 ruthenium atoms. Two hundred and sixteen ruthenium atoms, and we have two hundred ninety-one atoms in total. Going back to the best file now, so we do two ninety-one minus two sixteen. That means there's seventy-five indium atoms. Okay, and now we go back to the X Y Z. Copy our coordinates. Now these coordinates are good because we had already taking into account the repetition of atoms across the periodicity directions A and B, right? When we cut those uh, uh, layers off the end. Okay, so these first 216 atoms will be ruthenium and the last 75 atoms will be indium. The A and B lattice constants are 22.98 angstroms and the C lattice constant for our hetero structure is just vacuum. Okay, so we save, exit. Now we go to our VASP. And what we're going to do is open this new VASP file. Okay, here is our new structure. As you can see, uh, there is what looks like a little bit of, it looks like these are actually, these two layers are pretty close together. Uh, if you can see here where I zoom in, if I go into the space filling model, they are going to, their electron clouds, so to speak, are going to interact a little bit. So if you were to subject this heterostructure or interface to geometry optimization, you'd probably get uh, some repulsion here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to go into the... Uh, going into this file here and I'm going to actually separate the layers a little bit. So I go to edit, edit data, unit cell, and recall we have our indium layer on top. So I go to phase, indium, and I'm just going to make this 7.5 apply. Separate it a little bit. Let's actually go ahead and make it 8. Okay, now I'm going to just do this process over. Actually, what happened was when I changed anything regarding the phase, the atoms repopulated here. So I have to re-delete the atoms. File, export data. We will rewrite this file. Yes, replace it. No. Now what we do is we just come back into the XYZ and we are going to copy these atoms, still 291. Go back into the VASP, paste in the new unit coordinates that have now been separated a little bit more. Delete the atom identities because they're given here. Save it. And now let's compare, let's open up the structure again. And so you can see now there's a little more distance between the atoms. Space filling. 
Okay, so this will probably uh, give better convergence for a self-consistent field calculation. And so what we will do is actually, you don't need to worry about this top layer up here. That's just the periodic repetition of this bottom layer of ruthenium here. Let's go to properties, atoms. Let's change the color of the ruthenium to pink. And let's expand this using boundary. Let's do three in the X, three in the Y, and keep the Z as one. And so there is our, basic, basically there's our interface right there. Uh, just expand it nicely. So I'm going to unexpand it now. And so, yeah, you could, this, this top layer could be whatever choice you want. It could be like graphene, uh, graphene nano ribbon, could be gold. This bottom layer could be like cadmium selenide, some semiconducting surface, something of that nature. And so I, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave, the, leave them down in the comments section. I will make sure I get back to you. If there's anything you want me to go over, anything you missed or anything that was confusing, just let me know. I'm here to help. Uh, thank you so much for viewing and for your time. Take care.